Hi students, I'm going to show you a good way, I think, to study vocabulary, specifically academic vocabulary. I'm starting with the list of vocabulary words that you're working on. These are words from the MAR article that we studied, but this could work for any vocabulary that you're studying. There's a list of words here. You don't want to study all the words. You want to study the words that are hard for you, and hard for you means that you have trouble using the word in your sentences, spoken sentences, written sentences. And when I say word, I mean words that are in the word family. So, for example, you may know the meaning of transformation or transform, but you don't really know how to use it in a sentence. Then you want to study that word because if you don't know how to use it in the sentence even if you know that it means change you can't actually use it i'm going to start with a different word just because i already looked it up let's start with uh, empathy and for this i'll be using my favorite online dictionary longman online dictionary and here we go empathy i like longman because it gives you a lot of really good information it gives you a lot of example sentences, gives you pronunciation, and it gives you word families. So this is part of the word family. Usually there's more parts of the word family up here. We don't get it here. I don't know why. Maybe because this word's a little bit rare. Now when you're studying this word, you need to be able to make your own sentence. And the first step in that process is finding another sentence that somebody else wrote that's perfect. Do not write your own sentence and guess the best way to use it. Because when you study that use that you made yourself, it might be right, it might be wrong. And what's the good in that? Why would you want to study something that might be wrong? So start with something you know is right. So for example, let's say I want to practice empathy with the preposition, with with or for, because the dictionary tells me that that might happen. So I'm going to copy this sentence, and I might literally just copy this sentence for my own studying, and I might paste it here. I felt a very real empathy for it. We can learn a few things from this sentence right away. I can learn that you can feel empathy. So you can feel empathy, and that verb and this noun probably go together because it's in the dictionary, right? And I learned that you can use a preposition for after empathy with an object, it. So then when I study, I'm not going to, I might study this sentence, but I'm also going to make my own sentence. And when I make my own sentence, I'm not going to change it very much. I'm going to just change it a little bit for me to make sure that I know what it means and that maybe I can use it in my writing. We're talking about robots, right? So probably you should change the sentence in a way that makes it about robots. So you could say robots, and what verb are we going to use? Definitely feel, right? Robots feel, and you could say real empathy, but why not just, they feel empathy for something, right? So I could say feel empathy for humans. I know that this sentence is, correct, or I'm 99% sure that it's correct, because I copied the verb, I copied the the noun, the object here, and I copied the preposition, and I put another object, just like this sentence. I can make it, you know, a little different. I could say robots don't feel empathy for humans. I could add something, therefore, I'm scared of them. It doesn't really matter. You probably want to keep it simple when you're studying vocabulary. If you just memorize this sentence, robots don't feel empathy for humans, and you study that a little bit every day, review it a little bit every day for a week, you're going to have it. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Should we look at one more? Let's look at one more. So I mentioned transform. Let's do transform. Transform. And here you get, see, you get this crazy word family stuff at the top. You don't need to study all of these. But maybe you look at this list and you're like, ah, transformation, I want to know transformation. Or maybe you saw a transformation in the article, so you know it's useful. Then study that one. Don't study all of them. 
Um, and then again, I'm looking for something I can copy. So I see that you can transform something into something. So I'm going to copy that. So I'm going to find one sentence that I understand, maybe a short one. OK, and I'm going to copy that sentence. The new technology transforms something into something else. So I don't need to copy all of this. I shouldn't copy all this. I should make my own. So we're talking about artificial intelligence. So I could say artificial intelligence transforms uh, the work experience into something different. <laughs> I don't know. OK, uh, maybe, well, maybe that's uh, whatever. That's my sentence, and I might study it. I'm using transforms one thing into another thing. And that's a way you study vocabulary. Probably your homework this week will ask you to look up some sentences, look up some normal ways to use these words, and to imitate them to practice uh, using them in your own, in your own way based on those sentences. Last bit of uh, vocabulary I'll give you is collocation, just because I don't know if it'll be in your handout or not. Collocation means like uh, words that fit together. So when you learn one word, it's really important to learn how that word can fit in with other words. So things like empathy for is a collocation or feel empathy is a collocation, or transform something into something is a collocation. And if you learn those combinations or chunks of words, your writing can be more natural and more accurate.